As the Chinese military edges closer to Taiwan, a new movement is forming to fight back. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. More than 100,000 protesters defied Taiwan's rainy season downpours to gather outside the Taiwanese legislature in Taipei last month. There, they voiced their opposition to the passing of a reform bill that will change the balance of power in Taiwan's democracy. Similar protests were held across major cities throughout the island. Inside the legislature, things weren't exactly quiet around this time either. During a parliamentary session where lawmakers were supposed to debate the bill, a mass brawl broke out in the legislative chamber instead between politicians supporting the bill and those opposing it. Are we sure they were debating a bill and not vying for a championship match at WrestleMania? As if the scene wasn't bizarre enough, a lawmaker at one point pulled out a flute in the middle of the turmoil and began to play the national anthem. At some point, an opposing legislator wrestled the controversial bill out of the hands of another legislator and took off with it. So they went from having a battle royale to playing hide and seek. By the time the chaos eventually died down, several lawmakers were injured and had to be taken to the hospital. But despite all this rigorous opposition to the reform package, it ended up being passed into the legislature anyway. So in response, a coalition of protesters, politicians, and civil society organizations banded together to form the Bluebird Movement. The name of the movement comes from the Chinese name of the street where most of the protests against the reform bill took place outside the legislature. And it soon led to illustrations of the Taiwanese politicians associated with opposition to the legislation as bluebirds. Taiwanese legislator and member of the new movement, Wang Tingyu, explained that the bluebird represents the Taiwanese people's pursuit of democracy and freedom, and that bluebirds are highly protective of their nests. Essentially, he's saying that the movement's aim is to protect Taiwan's democratic system, even if it's in the middle of a WWE steel cage. The goal not only resonated in Taiwan, but also abroad. In Paris, people gathered in support for the movement and in support for safeguarding freedoms in Taiwan. And in Times Square, supporters rallied to show their unwavering commitment to Taiwan's democracy. They also had this billboard run at the heart of the square, which is especially wholesome because usually the main thing people see at the heart of Times Square is the naked cowboy. So clearly, this reform bill has sparked a lot of opposition across the Taiwanese community, as well as a sense that Taiwan's democracy is in danger. Now, the bill is essentially a package of amendments that somewhat empowers the Taiwanese legislative branch at the expense of the executive branch. However, questions have been raised about the constitutionality of the amendments. So in the end, Taiwan's constitutional court will rule on the changes before anything can be fully implemented. While this is a lot of complicated hard work, that's what democracy looks like. As opposed to if Taiwan were ruled by China, where political dissidents, uh, yeah. But as the reforms stand now, they will grant lawmakers the power to require the president to deliver annual reports and answer questions from lawmakers. Also, the amendments will give lawmakers authority to fine or even jail government officials for behavior deemed in contempt of the legislature. Gee, I wonder where they got that kind of idea. Also, would this be considered contempt or competition or combat? The reform bill is some of the first legislative work that has passed through the legislature since the legislative and presidential election in January. The Democratic Progressive Party, the DPP, won the presidential election for an unprecedented third time in a row. The legislative election, however, was more messy, with no party achieving a clear majority. But the largest opposition party, the Kuomintang, or KMT, has subsequently teamed up with the much smaller Taiwan's People's Party, the TPP, to get their candidates elected as the Taiwanese equivalent of Speaker of the House. And yes, they literally formed a tag team. Pro wrestling isn't fake, it's real life. It was the opposition parties, the KMT and the TPP, that together passed the reform bill, while the DPP strongly opposed it. Not to be mistaken with DDP. I've literally never made so many wrestling references in my life. The DPP has been in favor of legislative reforms in the past when it did not hold the presidency. But the anger over the current legislation is not just about the content, but also about the way it was passed. 
The KMT and the TPP have been accused of lacking transparency in their work on the bill and of not allowing proper deliberation and debates to be held before passing it. This criticism has resounded among protesters, too, in chants like, no discussion, no democracy. With one demonstrator saying that pushing the bills through the legislature without proper deliberation has violated the regular democratic practices. Leading Xi Jinping to say, I can't wait to violate their regular democratic practices. Now looking at this from the outside, the brawling in the legislature and the emergence of an entire movement in a dispute over legislative procedures and the strengthening of democratically elective legislature might seem like kind of an overreaction. But to understand this strong reaction, we need to go back to a previous case of murky legislation in the Taiwanese legislature, as well as look at the ever-present danger that the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, poses to Taiwan's democracy. Because 10 years ago, in 2014, a different majority in the legislature tried to rush through a free trade agreement with China. The factions kept refusing to talk with each other. I don't know what they need more, protests or couples counseling. And not unlike today, the legislative work on the free trade agreement was criticized for circumventing established review procedures. The agreement itself was going to open up Taiwan to Chinese investments across multiple sectors, including its healthcare system, its financial system, its communication services, and in construction. So basically, the trade agreement was going to weave Taiwan's economy very closely together with the Chinese economy. At the time, the KMT had the leadership in the legislature, too. And on top of that, they held the presidency, with Ma Ying-jeou serving as one of the most pro-Beijing presidents that Taiwan has ever seen. Ma, for example, invited high-ranking CCP officials to visit Taiwan. And in 2015, he became the first sitting president to meet with a leader of the CCP. Back in 2006, before he got elected, Ma reportedly made remarks in an interview about the eventual unification between China and Taiwan. The CCP, of course, loved this and eagerly worked with President Ma to tie Taiwan's fate closer to China's. But the mood was very different among the Taiwanese people. Only 28% of the Taiwanese public supported its government's trade agreement with China. Many feared that the increased economic dependence on China could jeopardize Taiwan's hard-earned democracy and sovereignty. And that if the agreement was allowed to pass, Taiwan would be walking blindfolded towards de facto unification with China. Which is crazy. I mean, when has anyone ever regretted becoming economically dependent on China? And when has China ever overstepped their bounds and broken international law? Doesn't sound like the China I've been covering for over a decade. So as the free trade agreement with China was being rushed through the legislature in 2014, as many as half a million people took to the streets of Taipei in protest. Some of them even occupied the legislature for 23 days demanding that the KMT government ensure a transparent review of the trade agreement. The coalition of civic groups that joined together to protest the passage of the trade agreement became known as the Sunflower Movement. And the Taiwanese people still celebrate its anniversary or use sunflowers as symbols of protest to this day. Also, can we just appreciate how adorable these names are? The Sunflower Movement? The Bluebird Movement? If China ever invades, I'm expecting the resistance to be called the Bumblebees. The KMT eventually backed down and conceded to the demands of the movement, and the trade agreement was not picked up again, as less than two years later, in the 2016 elections, the KMT was soundly defeated, losing both the presidency and its legislative majority to the DPP. Now, the Chinese Communist Party hates the DPP. So as soon as the KMT were out of office, friendly tones from Beijing quickly turned hostile. The CCP cut all communication with the Taiwanese government after 2016. China also dramatically increased its military activities around Taiwan. And it has regularly interfered in Taiwan's elections. But don't worry, I'm sure they'd never overstep their bounds and break international law, because that still definitely doesn't sound like the China I've been covering for over a decade. Despite this, the DPP was able to hold on to both the presidency and its legislative majority until the election in January of this year, when it lost the legislature to the KMT-TPP opposition. Paradoxically, the leader of the TPP, Ko wen -jie, said last year that he supports reviving the free trade agreement from 2014. 
even though he was a prominent member of the Sunflower Movement that fought against it. I guess you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a massive sellout. It was the TPP's support that made it possible for the KMT to pass the reform bill that the Bluebird Movement is opposing. Even though the DPP still controls the presidency, unlike an American president, a Taiwanese president can do very little to block a legislative majority from pushing through the laws that they want. Knowing that the KMT has previously supported the same free trade agreement with China that the leader of the TPP voiced support for last year, there is concern that the KMT and the TPP will use the reform bill as a precedent and start to steamroll legislation through the legislature that will once again push Taiwan towards China. As one DPP lawmaker put it, if legislative reform can be done this way, then cross-strait agreements, national security laws, and anti-infiltration laws can as well, as if Taiwan has opened her door wide open to China as the KMT and the TPP team up to help China eliminate different obstacles to unification. Double teaming to establish dominance, classic bad guy tag team wrestling maneuver. Seriously, never so many wrestling references in my life. And we know that if Taiwan completely opens its doors to Beijing, the CCP will have no interest in the preservation of the democratic structures in Taiwan. The destruction of freedoms in Hong Kong is a perfect example of what happens to democratic systems under Beijing's control. For Taiwan, CCP leaders have said that when Taiwan is unified with China, Taiwanese people will have to undergo re-education. The only way to make that sentence more dystopian is if he said it while chewing on Soylent Green. But if Taiwanese people's staunch defense of their democracy in the last decade is any indication, they will never agree to letting their own politicians endanger their freedoms. If the current legislature were to try anyway, they would soon most likely find themselves surrounded by a swarm of angry bluebirds, carrying sunflowers, and potentially bumblebees. And now it's time for me to respond to a question or comment from a member of the China Uncensor 50 Cent Army, fans who support the show on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Today's comes from Jay. Putting an ad for a news app called Newsspeak in an episode warning about a malicious app called Newsbreak really threw me off. On one hand, it carries the stank of the CCP app by sounding like it and being in the same video here. On the other hand, it's a word straight out of Orwell's 1984 with awful connotations. On a third hand, because AI can't do hands, I'm genuinely wondering if you're just joking about it being a real thing. You weren't joking, right? Okay, thank you for bringing this up, Jay, because you weren't the only one confused. Jay is referring to this episode where I talk about News Break, a news aggregation app that has the CCP's fingerprints all over it. Now, at the end of that episode, I mentioned that a former writer for China Uncensored has created her own new show called News Speak, where she analyzes and deconstructs some of the narratives in mainstream media, hence News Speak, like Orwell. Here's a link on screen where you can subscribe to that show, which I recommend. I don't recommend downloading News Break. Thanks for your question, Jay. And click on this video from my new philosophy channel, Deep Thoughts While Gaming, where I look at games and what they can teach. This one is about the remake of Paper Mario and why you should be proud to be an American, even if the country isn't perfect. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.